proper good morning to you. Sermon's going to last half an hour. Good morning. Good morning. Now I've decided that God must be speaking this morning. That's always helpful to know, isn't it? It is fairly handy when the Lord's speaking. Question, not for you to answer, but you to think about just for a moment. Have you really said, Lord, your will be done? Have you really ever said today, Lord, your will be done today? No matter what, hang the consequences, your will be done today, and you've lived your entire day with that in the back of your brain, Lord, your will be done today. I just found it fascinating what Denzel said this morning. Think about it for a moment. Concept that you really, really mean it. You actually walked out of your house, maybe this morning, you walked out of your dwelling place and went, Lord, your will be done today, no matter what. Hard, isn't it? When you really think about it, you sit for a minute and you think, yeah, might have prayed the Lord's Prayer. Right in the middle of that, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But it's amazing how about 10 minutes into it, that day, you start <clears throat> deciding what you want to happen for the day. Have you been there? Are we there this morning? Going, come on, Lord. I want to get this over and done with. I've got things to do, you know. I've got to go to Tesco's. Oh. <laughs> do you know there's an amazing thing with God? Do you know the really great thing? God works in partnership with us, his people, to bring about his purposes and kingdom. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that the greatest thing? Do you know what the worst thing is? Our Lord works in partnership with us to bring about his purposes and kingdom. Why is it the worst thing? Because we have this amazing God-given ability to block his kingdom at work. Oh, now there's a shock. We have the God-given ability to see his presence occur and to see his kingdom come into all and every situation, yes? And we like that. But we also have the God-given ability, believe it or not, to block it. Now, for some of us, that might seem like I've just said the worst thing ever possible. Because it's God's kingdom. God is all-powerful, all-sovereign. And that's the word, sovereign. He works in partnership with us. And there are times, my brothers and sisters, when we, because of our selfish attitude... We deciding that today it's going to be my will and what I want to happen. That God's kingdom, God's presence doesn't come about upon where we are. Isn't that scary? Now the ultimate time of when Jesus returns and everything's wrapped up, that we can't stop one jot. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd hate to even remotely be that responsible. But in areas of our lives, in the people that we walk with and talk to, we can stop them coming to know Jesus at that moment. We can block God wanting to talk to them or communicate with them. Isn't that scary? It doesn't take much. You can just decide today, do you know, I am not going to, I'm going to spend the entire day not talking to anyone. You ever done that before? I would find it almost impossible, I will admit. If God wanted me to take a vow of silence, I think there would be a problem between me and him. <laughs> but
But when we say, God, your will be done, that does mean that we submit to him. We submit our daily day to him, minute by minute, hour by hour. I have to say, over the last few months, this whole prayer, Lord, your will be done, just doesn't escape me. In reference to the church, in reference to the community, it's, Lord, your will be done. I want to read to you Mark chapter 2. I'm not going to put it on the screen. I'm just going to read it. Uh, we had problems this morning initially. Mark, 20, uh, Mark chapter 2, verses 18 to 22. Once, when John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, some people came to Jesus and asked, why don't your disciples fast like John's disciples and the Pharisees do? Jesus replied, do wedding guests fast while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. They can't fast while the groom is with them. But someday the groom will be taken away from them and then they will fast. Besides, who would patch old clothing with new cloth? For the new patch would shrink and rip away from the old cloth, leaving an even bigger tear than before. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. For the wine would burst the wineskins, and the wine and the skins would both be lost. New wine calls for new wineskins. We know what the problem is here. The people saw the Pharisees who were sticklers for the rules, stickler for the structure, stickler for the, for the way that things should pan out. Things like not working on the Sabbath and what they considered not working on the Sabbath. And if you remember back at Easter time, we found it quite funny that they broke their own rules when they wanted to uh, make sure that Jesus' tomb was guarded on the Sabbath day. It's amazing how we break our own rules when we want to. But they were stickler, and the problem was, clearly, the, as we know, the disciples weren't fasting. What was going on? The people were seeing this, and can you imagine the Pharisees around the background? Look what they do. They don't fast. They don't fast like we do, and they're probably whispering in people's ears. Yes, they, they sound like strange old men, like hermit-type people. But they don't fast. They don't do what we want them to do. Look at what they're doing. They don't do what we want them to do. They don't do it the way we do, so it has to be wrong. Ever looked at people, fellow Christians in church, and maybe that little voice is in the back of your head saying, they don't do it like I do, this can't be of God. Can you understand me? Jesus is saying, as we well know in this passage, I am the new wine, by the way, was um, imagery of God's blessing, God's presence, God's blessing out and power. Jesus is the new wine. I've come to bring new ways of God being. The old structure that you have is not going to work anymore. It's dried up. This is the imagery he's trying to use. The old wineskin that used to take the old wine, i.e. the old rules and the old ways of being, They've shriveled up. They're used. They've had it. You've had that wine. It's over and done with. We are with new wine, new blessing, new way of being. If you try to pour new wine into an old wineskin, wine ferments, did you know? If you can leave good quality wine, I mean proper quality wine, a bottle laid in a particular way, yeah, it actually improves with age. I was going to make some comment about myself not improving with age, but we'll leave it there. But it improves with age. It gets better. It gets richer. But the problem is it ferments and it expands. Now, in a glass bottle, that's not a problem because the glass is stronger than the fermentation process. But in a wineskin, 
it wouldn't have done. It would have expanded the white skin and then burst and cracked. And then all the good wine and all the wine skin and all the structure would have been completely and utterly destroyed and become useless. Greenford Baptist Church since 1998 there's been this overarching verse from Isaiah 43 forget all that it's nothing compared to what I'm going to do from about to do something new see I have already begun do you not see it it's been an overarching for those who've been here for more years than they care to remember um, they will remember that. We had a whole banner up here of it, an artwork, and it was an overarching theme, and it has never really left us. We believe it's, the leadership team believe it's been a constant thing. It just hasn't left us. And so then I want to go back to the four prophecies at the back. Who's read all four prophecies at the back? If you've not read them, I wish to encourage you to read them, because we're going to go through them now. One after the other. Are you ready? Still only take half an hour. Don't worry. <coughs> First prophecy was in 1998. This was called the 20th century. For some of you might have still been teenagers then. I love the church at Greenford, stroke Northolt, for the struggles you've been through in my name. I honour the men and women who have striven for my kingdom to come. But now it is not enough. It is not enough. Judgment is here. I need clean lives, the laying down of self, lives more transparent, filled with me, more waiting on me. How can you hear me if you don't listen together? Spring clean my house, open its doors wide to my spirit and I will fill it. Judgment is here. You can say yes or no, there is no middle way. When the Spirit of God is upon you, you will preach good news to the poor, proclaim freedom for the prisoners, release for the oppressed, healing for the blind, proclaim the Lord's favour. This is what I want. Do you want it enough? Hard hitting, yeah? That was back in 1998. And the bit that really jumped out for me was, again, this is what I want, says the Lord. Do you want it enough? You can either say yes or you can say no. There is no middle way. So you can either say, yes, Lord, your will be done or no. And don't complain if you choose the no camp. Actually, don't complain if you choose the yes camp. It's God's will. Okay? Second one, the well prophecy. As a church, we're a well of living water. I saw a picture of a well sunk into the ground where the church stands. By the way, it was about here. Just so you know, just for those who don't know. It's been dug deep over many years by obedience, sacrifice, and the prayers and labours of the Christians who came before us. The Holy Spirit was their guide and counsellor, their strength and shield. I saw the well fill up, or well up with water, living water, and it's overflowing, it's pouring out into the streets, homes and lives of those around. People will come to us, Jesus' body, to drink. They'll be thirsty for God's love. Forgiveness, grace, healing, power, strength, and life in abundance. But we also need to carry that water to those like the man at the pool, that's in John 5, 1 to 15, who in their sickness, sin, or darkness are not able to make it to the pool. Going to comment, Liz made some comments many years ago on that, and I'm going to quote it to you. 
We believe that God has shown us at Greenford Baptist Church that there is a well in the church, a well that God placed there as a source of his spirit's anointing, an anointing for his church, yes, but more than that, for the community around us in West London and beyond. For those who don't know him yet, the flow of water from this well will be of such force, such power, that it will pour out to the surrounding area, taking God's love, mercy and power into a world so desperately need of God's touch. We also believe that the well has blockages which are hindering the flow. These blockages are caused by past sin, broken relationships, wrong attitudes towards others, lack of integrity, unbelief, etc., etc., we believe that God is calling us to intercession to see these blockages removed and the flow released. And then she quotes Chronicles 7, verse 14 to 15, which, you know, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then I will hear their name. I will hear their prayers and I will heal their land. Bizarrely enough, that's part of what the prayer tower is now on a Monday night. It's about us praying for the community humbling ourselves and praying for the community. You have an option to come next tomorrow night, meet here at eight o'clock. We're going to pray walk the streets of Greenford. And guess what? We're also going to go into two of the pubs in the high street because I bet none of us have ever been inside either the Wishing Well or Hennessy's. Need to go into these places. That's where the people are. And that is why also next weekend, this Thy Kingdom Come initiative, this taking an hour and praying for our community. God, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Amen? Amen. Third prophecy. You're thinking, why is he just reading off the prophecies? You need to hear the core theme. Third prophecy, back in 2005, and it was connected to the previous two. I love you, my people. Sounds familiar to 1998. I love you passionately. I have shared in your joys. More importantly, I have felt your pain. Forget your past mistakes. We all go, amen. I have erased them all. And I love you, says God. He means it, by the way. Just, Just to pick that up. I now want to do a new thing amongst you. But I need clean hands, clean lives. Forget the trivia, the insignificant things all around you. I'd like to replace that today with forget the old wineskins. Fix your eyes firmly on me. And allow me to cleanse you. I need clean vessels and clean lives in order for my will to be done amongst you. Again, Lord wants his will to be done. By the way, when it says there, and I used to misread these back in my, um, uh, when I really didn't reflect, when I used to feel really guilty about myself and my sins, I always read that I've got to get myself cleansed first before God can use me. It doesn't work like that. If you keep saying your will be done, Lord, the Lord will do the cleansing for you. You've just got to submit to it. Okay, so allow God to do that for you. And this is the last one. And I do wonder this will happen now. Ready for this? This happened in September 2014. It's nearly three years ago now. I couldn't believe how long ago this was. This happened at a leadership team weekend, but it's the fourth one up there. This was to the church. Listen, listen, just listen. I'm conveying how it was read originally. And I did not want to read it. Do not be frightened by the mountains you face. Climb to the very top and you will see how extensive and profound what I have in store for you. I will break the mould and take you to places you have not imagined, such beauty, peace, and comfort. The climb is not easy. It requires dedication, single-minded focus, purity of heart, and dependence on me. 
In your own strength, you cannot do it. In your own wisdom, you will fail. There will be resting and hiding places along the way. Let me direct you. I will not force you, but you have got to let me be in charge. Just listen! So when I worked it back and thought, gosh, 16 years since the first one to that one. And I do wonder if our Lord is going, could you please listen to what I am saying? I've got this great new blessing, this great new way of being. I've got how this outpouring that's going to flow from here out there, bring people in here, back out again, and it's going to be an ebb and a flow. And it's going to be amazing if you let me be in charge. You let my will be done. <sighs> if you remember, two weeks ago I preached on the Lord's Prayer. And I really focused on the fact that actually we enter into the grace of God. And when we recognise when we recognise how our sin, and we recognise in the same breath his grace upon us, we'll go, wow. But in that prayer, it does say, Lord, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, unfortunately, for some of us, we then take that your will to be done to a passive state. Well, just whatever God wants today. We'll almost use, and I'm going to say this, we're all going to most use where within Islam they say, ah, Allah's will be done. That passive sort of when bad things happen, ah, Allah's will be done. And Christians take it to that point sometimes with God of, ah, well, Lord, your will be done. Whatever. In other words, I won't bother praying about the situation. I won't bother seeking you to bring about your kingdom into this situation. I'll just say, ah, your will be done. Do you see the difference? That's the lazy Christian. I'll be honest with you. We have to be seeking God. Why would God say, if my people will humble themselves and pray? What, we're just going to be praying, oh Lord, your will be done. <whistles> yeah, I'm just going to turn the TV on. <sighs> oh, football's going well. A couple of weeks' time, I'll be going, hey, come on, Andy Murray, let's go, son. That's the lazy Christian. I will be up front with you, my brothers and sisters. Praying actually involves some sweat and blood. Might be praying for healing. We have to pray. But in that, we still have to have, in everything we pray for, listening to what God is saying. Your will be done. Does it seem like a bit of a hammering sermon this morning? Try not to. It's trying to be, God wants to do amazing new things for us. Amen? Amen? He really wants to change things. But I think God is saying, maybe for some of us, we're still hanging on to the old wineskin. This is how my life is. This is how it's always been with God, and that's how it's going to remain. And God's going, great, do that. Guess what? I'll start pouring out the new wine and it is going to split. You're going to crack. You're going to collapse. And you are going to fall on the ground because there is nothing left. Be flexible. Become a new wineskin. Maybe we, some of us, might have to change some of our understanding of how God works. We might have to change our understanding of how church works. Now, before anybody thinks so and thinks is our pastor's going down a strange theological route, no, I'm still very much an evangelical. Straight down the line, I believe certain core things and core beliefs. Very much so. Don't think he's just got his handshake and he's gone on one. He hasn't. Still very much believe Jesus is the only way, death and the cross. But it does not mean that God works in the same pattern in everything that we do. God wants to use you out there in your workplaces, in your friendship groups. And we sometimes seem to think, I don't know, uh, maybe I've got to preach the gospel. No, you haven't always got to preach the gospel. Be the gospel. Be the good news. 
But God wants to do something new. Sometimes we have to change the way we think. And one of the key things we have to do, notice the we, I'm talking to myself as well, is that we have to say, Lord, your will be done. Change the way I think. I'm going to make the most obvious statement in the world. But actually, God, Jesus, the Bible, goes against a lot of the way that the world thinks. Yeah? It's a bit obvious, really. Problem is, my brothers and sisters, we tend to still take some of the well bits and lay it on the Bible, not the other way around. Because we want to keep our lifestyle the way it is. Yes? But if we actually said to God, Lord, your will be done, We'd be set free. If we know that we're doing something, we know, we deep in our heart, deep in our gut know that actually this is not what God wants. I can justify it, I could unpack it and justify living a life the way I'm living it at the moment. But if you know deep in here, it's still, if somebody really came up and it confronted you with it, you'll be uncomfortable, yes? You're feeling uncomfortable now? Good. I'm not. Not at the moment. Do you see what I mean? You could feel uncomfortable about it. And you're fighting it because you really, you know, God's saying, let it go. Allow my will to be done. Change that pattern of life. Set, let me set you free. But we don't. It's almost like kneeling, saying, yes, Lord, your will be done. But actually, in reality, we've got one leg up, sort of saying, yeah, but this bit, that's mine. This is my will, OK? Yeah? You're never going to look at my right leg the same again, are you? <laughs> but that's my will. And we don't truly submit. We don't truly prostrate ourselves. We don't truly, in our hearts, say, your will be done. Because he wants to do a new thing, Amen? And he's actually, the problem is, I actually don't know, actually, that's wrong. He's doing it already. We, no phrase we, could well be putting blockages there because we're not saying your will be done. When you came to church this morning, just because, you know, this Sunday morning for a couple of hours is a small, real small part of what your walk's meant to be about. This is meant to be about encouraging or exhortation or being challenged and all this sort of stuff. But when you came this morning, did you come going, Lord, your will be done in the church this morning? Lord, see an outpouring of your spirit. Want to see you going on, changing me, challenging me, challenging the church. Want to see healings happen in here. Want to see your spirit at work, your power at work. Did you walk in this morning thinking like that? Good. Who's to participate in making that happen? No, 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 not the pastor. Get your hands up. Everybody get your hands up. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Hands in the air. Like you just don't care because you shouldn't do. Lord, your will be done. If I don't see hands up in the air, I'll tell you. Yes? Who's meant to participate? Us. Us. It doesn't happen unless we engage in it. And it's the same the other six and a half days a week. God is saying, you've got the God-given ability to see his presence, his kingdom come in your life and in the lives of those around you. But it only happens if we, brothers and sisters, say, your will be 
done. Now, I know that we have to shop for a living. We have to work for a living. We have to do all those practical things. But while you're doing that, you can be saying, Lord, your will be Your will be done. Your will be done. Actually, just, can we just recite that again? Your will be done. Do you believe it? Yes. Do you mean it? Yes. What, now for the next 30 seconds? <laughs> What's that? Your will be done. Keep them quiet now, Lord. Yeah? Listen, I, I, it's not, this is not meant to be, but this is, I want you to walk out. I have found life over the last few months when I've gone, your will be done, Exciting. <laughs> Bosse, what? <laughs> it's been exciting. It's been hard. It's been painful. But it's been fun. It's been, wow, look what God can do. When you go, Lord, your will be done and mean it. I can tell you some stories where I've gone, Lord, your will be done. Gone out for the day and then gone, really? No, no, I'll try and avoid that. And then God's gone, sorry, what did you say this morning? And I went, oh, yes, your will be done, Lord. <laughs> but it's worth it. But it, I'm not saying it's, oh, there's flashing lights every five minutes. Because with Jesus, it was your will be done, Lord, not mine. And that most certainly was not flashing lights and, oh, isn't this great? Oh, I'm just about to go on across and die for everybody in this room and the rest of the world. But nonetheless, it was the best thing that ever happened for all of us lot, wasn't it? And he now sits at the right hand of the Father in glory and in power. And he will come and judge the living and the dead. And that is the same Jesus who said, you can say yes or you can say no. There is no middle way. Lord, your will be... Done. Done. <clears throat> I'd like you to take a few moments. Take a few moments and we're gonna gonna hand over to Carlene in a moment, but just take see what has God been saying. Seeing as musicians, you do need to return. I want you to bow your heads. I want you to sit and go, Lord, what are you saying to me now when I say to you, Lord, your will be done? we say Lord your will be done false guilt is removed Lord your will be done his power can flow and his presence can manifest itself wherever we are for those around us Lord your will be done invite you if you want to not all of us can do it because we're physically not able to and that's fine but you can in your heart you know who you are but some of you might want to kneel where you are as an act of saying actually your will be done I want to mark this moment you might just want to kneel in your chairs where you are don't don't do it under full skill do it if you want to 
Some of you, we know we can't do that for physical reasons. That's fine. God knows that. That's not the problem here. You might want to say to God, yeah, your will be done. God is doing a new thing. And he beckons us to partner with him in it. Lord, your will be done. thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven <clears throat> for all of us Lord who are marking this moment today ask us that for all of us Lord we are reminded Holy Spirit that you remind us you nudge us each day now of this moment you nudge us each day with those words your will be done not for guilt but just to remind us Lord remind us Lord that actually the only way is the way is to submit to your will is to bow the knees is to come before your throne of grace and saying your will be done today on earth through me as it is in heaven Lord, I want to pray for new wine, that we will recognise the new wine and we will be your new wineskins. Flow your kingdom through us in the name of Jesus. Not just for us, but through us for others. To see power at work, Lord. To see the healings, to see the words of knowledge, the prophecy, Lord. So people come to know your kingdom. And that they can do the same as us. Say, your will be done. Jesus' name. Amen. Carly. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.